Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast. Happy Monday. Hope everyone's having a glorious beginning to their week. They're rising. They're grinding. They're uh, shining. Rise, rise, and, rise, grind, and shine. Hey, Jax, how are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much. So be happy to be back on the ones and twos with Turdy. Even ones though I two. immensely enjoyed the weekend, alarm-free living, even though my alarm is my son and it goes off earlier than I could have ever imagined. My alarm is my son and my husband is my rose. Gorgeousness. How is uh, the love of my life? He's good. He misses you, but he's doing his thing. It was really tough. You know, I saw a lot of great content this weekend of Harry out at the zoo. And it was it was tough. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to see people out there living your dreams, you know? Yeah. You would have loved it. I know. Yeah, Actually, but, you know, I have a thing against zoos. I, I won't go. It wasn't. Oh, shut up, you. No, like it's good for the kids. But like, you know, it I'm wasn't a go. zoo. It was a petting zoo, which is so different. Because when you think zoo, you're like lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. There was pigeons and oh. you know like goats all really domesticated animals yes yes the, the, okay there wasn't any animal that should be living in the wild okay okay so okay. maybe you're pro petting zoo i think i don't know if pet, petting zoo makes me think of like a circus like a birthday party like i don't know if petting zoo is the right word it's more of like a like a farm yeah yeah it was a petting zoo farm type of thing goats chickens that's a donkeys farm. swan okay. okay okay i'll allow it yeah it was harry all can't. very humane you know harry would not stand for anything because no, he's a I lover know of harry animals. is a lover of animals especially baby beluga in the deep blue say swim so wild and you swim so free do you know about um singing in cursive no it's like a TikTok thing and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like when you like sing weird and like people can't really, it's called singing in cursive. That's what I was just doing. I am, I hear what you're saying. When you say singing in cursive, that's not what I would expect. Yeah, no, that's fair. But that's what singing in cursive. Because cursive like, is like beautiful and elegant. And that was almost like opera. Cursive. Yeah. Yeah. What you no. did it's was, like is like comic sans. Oh, literally. Baby. I should go on TikTok where I'm just so annoying and I correct trends. I love that for you. Does anyone do that? That could be my niche. Niche? Niche. Okay. Were you like pronouncing that like to be quirky? Yeah, to be quirky. And oh. I do think some people pronounce it that way. Yeah, some people who are wrong definitely pronounce it that way. Yeah, but it could be my niche. What do you think? Does anyone do that? No, not a, you could really get the handle Gen Z's big sis and you're just teaching Gen Z like why they're all about wrong how about to, everything. How to like understand words and stuff. Yeah, and just be like this trend is not congruous with reality. I'm so sorry. Try again. Yeah. No, people would love that. Like you being negative, like bringing people back down to earth. I love that. I do kind of love that. Let me tell you how exhausted I am for the last 36 hours. I know I haven't gotten your weekend recap yet because I can only hear it once because of the seething jealousy that I feel so I couldn't hear it like last night and then again on the toast so I figured obviously we all want to hear about your weekend please Laturdia tell us about your weekend waking up in Vegas Laturdia okay so I saw Adele on Saturday night I literally woke up at 5 a.m got on a 7 30 flight it was delayed like don't even get me started like I woke up at five, just had my flight delayed an hour. And it's like, why? Everyone was there. The plane was there. Like, they didn't say. They were just being slow and, like, not conscious of people's times, which I thought was really disrespectful, Jeff Blue. And nevertheless, we persisted. I got there. Uh, it was, like, the longest day ever because I had, like, a six-hour flight, and I landed. It was fucking 10 a.m. or, like, 11. Um, I got to the hotel. I showered. I went to the spa. I got a massage. It was like, things were really working out for me, you know? And then Margot called me and she was like, did you see Brian's stories? And I was like, wait, what? And I had like, I had like tapped through Brian's stories just cause like it was like a lot of travel stuff and I was like getting my hair done over the <laughs> blow dryer. I couldn't hear, so I was just like tapping through. And the then I'm honesty. like, wait. Yeah, no. And then I'm like, oh my God. Brian had been in Denver for a work thing, which is why we decided to go cause he was already halfway there. Um, and the Vegas airport was like shut down. Like they were not letting in inbound flights. Of the weather. There the was wind. a lot of weather this weekend. His flight was delayed, like getting him in at like 8 p.m. The show was at 8. I was like, shit. And I was like, shit for a multitude of reasons. One, because Brian 
you know, was going to miss the show. And two, I was in Vegas alone. No, that's the shit. Yeah. So I was thinking, I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, do I go? I'm like, yeah, I go. But I have these extra tickets. Then I was thinking like, okay, maybe I'll buy the tickets off of Brian and like see if literally anyone I know is in Vegas right now. Or I was honestly thinking like, maybe I'll take a toaster. Like maybe there's a toaster there for her bachelorette party. I'll take the bride. You know, like I was really, I didn't want to go by myself. So I'm getting my hair done. I really wasn't like that worried. The thing about Brian is like, he's going to get where he needs to go. He's a travel expert. So I was like trying to come up with different plans. I was literally looking into like how much it would cost to charter a plane. And Brian was like, don't worry, I got it. He flew into St. George, which is like an airport in Utah that's about 90 minutes, maybe two hours, from the Strip. He landed, got there at 6, got ready at 6.30. We went down, had drinks. Like, timing was perfect. I don't know why everyone was like all bent out of shape. Like, it was fine. I, was, I don't know why. I wasn't even worried for a second, you know? But then... Once he got there, like, it was balls to the wall. Like, we just hit the ground running. We had cocktails. We went to the show. And let me tell you about this show. Wow. I have, I have a lot of layered thoughts. I just want to start with the show on its face. It was really, it was beautiful. It was, it was sensational. She's such a talent. She's so funny. Like, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people talk in between songs. Like, please, just shut up. Like, shut up and sing. Not to be that girl. Do a like, flip. Please. I just find it, like, so boring and... Like, I don't care. But Adele, like, she really could do stand-up. And I think it's because she's a formerly fat person and formerly fat people, like, have to be firing on all cylinders when it comes to talent, personality. Like, in order to be, like, accepted by everyone, it's like, you just have to be funny. And she really is. Oh, my God. She was so funny. And she was really kind of blunt. And she didn't, you know, zoom past the fact that, like, people who bought tickets for this show when they went on sale have had the tickets for 14 months. Like, People have been waiting a really long time. She didn't glaze past it. She gave her explanations. And, you know, what she basically said was, like, I didn't think it was going to be good the first time around. Like, I needed more time. And you know what? I totally understand and respect that. I think the what we were told about, like, Vegas not being able to have, you know, the, the infrastructure to operate in the way that she wanted, I don't think that was necessarily true. Because the show itself was not out of this world pyrotechnics flames dancers like it wasn't she didn't have an outfit change like it was it was very simple it was very stripped down very Adele but in a Vegas way so saying that Caesars like didn't have the infrastructure to get everything done in the time that's not necessarily true I just think she wanted it to be amazing and it was amazing and maybe she just wasn't ready 14 months ago but it was amazing I mean the set list she didn't get you know creative like just sing the songs that everyone likes and she did her voice is just unmatched like you didn't she had dancers and there was like you know moving stages and there was lanterns coming down from the sky she didn't even need all that but you know for Vegas you do that but it was really so special to see Adele she plays arenas and it was so special to see her in such an intimate setting I feel like you know even in the very last row you had an amazing seat it was very small it was beautiful I loved it. Everyone there was so excited and so like aware of the fact that this was such a special opportunity that not everyone's going to get to see. She talked really candidly about how much she loves doing it. You know, she spends her weekends in Vegas. She doesn't do anything else the rest of the week. She loves it. She lives in LA. It's like an easy commute. I feel like she should continue to do more. But it won't be as special if it's like, you know, year round and everyone Yeah, and can then see. she becomes, you know, like just like a Vegas girl staple and that's kind of yeah. the end of people's road to be doing that it's like retirement yeah so I think like if if she had to do more she would love it I don't think she will because I think she's very conscious of like you know she's very st strategic in her business yeah. um but it was incredible like it was it was so good and she did songs you know of yore she cried a few times especially talking about hometown glory which is like a really old kind of niche song but she's like I just love singing this song now because it reminds me so much of like the life, life I used to have when I could just like walk around and be like a normal girly and go to my hometown and go to the pubs and and she, she got emotional a couple times especially because the show that we saw was supposed to be the last show of the original residency like this was going to be the finale but when they announced that they were pushing it back they also announced that they were going to be adding another month because she was like I can't just announce bad news like I had to give the people something um so it was just like emotional for her it was emotional for everyone it was it was amazing it was really special it was very Vegas I loved every minute of it. And then, of course, afterwards, you know, we hit the town. We hit the casino. It was great. It was a good 20. I was really glad that I went, you know, it's like when Brian was almost not going to make it. I was like, this would happen to me. Like, I say yes to life. I do something crazy and I get fucked. 
and I'm here all by myself. But he made it, you know. Did you win it. money? So, no, I didn't. But, but it's important to know, like, I, towards the end of the night, like, I was down a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. It was just nothing was working in my favor. It was negative energy at the table. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I just decided to go, like, balls to the wall at the very last second. And I did, like, four hands in a row of, like, a shit ton of money. And I won. So I ended up only losing about $300, which for me is the cost of having a good time in Vegas. So I'm happy. So I, I like, no, I didn't lose. I didn't win. But, like, I didn't really lose, you know? Yeah. No, I, I think that that's fair. But it's, like, for so much of the night, it was stressful then that you were losing. No, because I was, like, blackout. And I always have fun when I'm gambling. Like, for me, if you, gambling can be so toxic. But, like, if you can go, come at it with, like, a leveled head and understand, like, you're paying the price of having fun. Like, how much would I be spending at a bar or a club? And the drinks are know? free. You'd probably spend $300 in drinks in Vegas for over the exactly. course of five, six hours. Exactly. So I felt good about the decision and I have fun like I really do enjoy gambling like I love to get to know the people at the table next to me I mean at the seats next to me no one was like feeling my energy I was like trying to you know throw out great you know thought starting questions at the table and the guy next to me um like he was not vibing at all like he was just there to make money you know yeah no they don't want to be thinking about anything other than the game yeah no and I was throwing around I'm like who are your guys as celebrity doppelgangers like I was asking good questions and he like he he was from Iraq and I don't think he really understood like the question and he was not like vibing with me at all but then you know we did find some common ground because I asked him what he did he's like wholesale I'm like okay give me more I'm like what else like wholesale of what he was like vapes I'm like you're a vape magnate like of course then I, that's like common ground we were talking about you know the license the legality he you know he did warm up to me but it took a while but Turdy, if you sat at a table and some no kill me bitch kill on me. the other end is like so who's everyone's celebrity doppelganger which is a concept that you're fundamentally against. against yeah you would take her out back and yeah. shoot her I would, but even the deal, the dealer liked the question because she was totally a Marissa Tomei lookalike. And I said, <laughs> I said, do you get Marissa Tomei? She's like all the time, like a young Marissa Tomei. What did you say for you? Nobody asked. That's the thing. It's like no one was interested. Like I was working overtime to make the conversation flow, and like I, no one was throwing it back to me. It sounds like next time you need to not go to Vegas alone. I wasn't alone. I was with Brian and John. Were like, they at Brian your table? And, yes, Brian is a really serious gambler. Who's like Brian's Brian, celebrity doppelganger? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Who's yours? Literally, Who's yours? Who I would you have said? I know you were waiting like, for someone to ask you. I, I actually, I don't even have one because people say Beanie Feldstein, but it's just, it's just not accurate, especially now that like I've lost weight. Like people only, I, I say this all the time. If you see me on tour and you watch my comedy special, I have a whole bit about like how I only get paired to, Ch I only get compared to Chubby Brunettes. Yeah. So it's like now that I've lost weight, people don't know who to compare me to. Well, Victoria Fuller. <gasps> True. That's your celeb True. doppelganger. True. <laughs> um, so Brian's like a really serious gambler. And like, I know Brian hates when I get all chatty at the table. But like, for me, that's the best part. And when your table is like, when you feel connected to the people at your table and you start having camaraderie, I'm telling you, it changes the cards. Like you're all playing together and you're having fun. Like your team. But when you play with Brian, we play at like a, a, min, a higher minimum table. Like the $5, $10 tables is all fun. But you play with people who don't know how to fucking play and they mess up the cards. So it's like, it's toxic. So with Brian, sometimes we pay at like the 50 or 100. And that's why like, I can't keep up. I'm like, oh my God, 100 each hand. So you're at a table with more serious, more focused people. They don't want to, they don't want, they're not interested in the camaraderie. And let me tell you across the way, there was this table I was having such FOMO of because every 10 minutes they were like, oh, like they were all screaming and they were all wearing cowboy hats and I was like I gotta get a seat at that table you know yeah that was like the vibe and I was at like the toxic serious probably like you know degenerative people gambling you know their tu kids tuition away and they were so focused like they did not they did not want to you know camaraderie with me it sounds like you need to find a balance between like you know the five dollar people who don't know how to play and the hundred dollar serious non-fun like maybe the 25 50 dollar table yeah, good luck getting a seat. Those are like the most popular ones because um, everybody wants like a decently, you know, mi a decent minimum, 25, 50. But then they also want people who know how to play mm. and you'll get that at the median tables. So you walk around, it's like my choice are the $5 tables to play with people who don't know how to play and are going to, you know, hit, are going to stay on a 12 against us. Isn't there really uh, just like one rule of knowing how to play, which is just no, like... No, no. Hit on 17? No. no, no. Hit on 17? No. 
You don't want to gamble with me, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, no, because Jackie's like, let's just let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, and like once the money comes out of the ATM, like it's gone. I don't no, it doesn't see have it, to be. I don't see it coming back, multiplying. So then I'm like, well, I have this money. Let's go shopping instead. That's more fun. Yeah, Jackie's so toxic to gamble with. Like if you care about like the there are there are there's a the book. They call it the book. Yeah. But there's not that Which many are, rules. It's just okay, when you're on 17, what do you do? You never hit on a 17 unless it's a soft 17, like you have an ace and a six. Okay, so there's the rule. What else is there? But also, it's so it, it's different every time. It's not just like hit on 12. It depends what the dealer is showing. The mm. dealer shows right, you right, one more card. Right, more or less than you. Right, right. Right, so if the dealer has like a four, five, or a six, you think they're going to bust. So no matter really what you have, you pretty much stay unless it's below an 11. Because let that bitch bust, not you. Why do I, you know, she has to take a card. You don't. Yeah. Because she has to hit up until 17. Exactly. Right. So play with, so, by the dealer's rules because dealer always wins. So you also, they sell, and that's how I learned how to play. They sell in most casino gift shops this little, it's like a, it looks like a playing card. It's one card and it has a chart and it's basically like, here's what you have and here's what the dealer has. They'll tell you what to do. And it's like the book. Mm. So that's how I learned how to play. And people, the higher you go to the minimums, like $50 table, people know the book. But the people who are playing $5 aren't playing, you know, to, to make a shit ton of money. They're just playing to have fun. They don't really know how to play. They don't gamble a lot. So it could be really treacherous because you don't want them fucking up the curds. No, the curds are everything. Everything. So, I mean, I'm exhausted. I got home at like 8 o'clock last night, passed out. But it was so worth it. I'm so glad. That's like a saying yes to life win. Amazing. I'm so glad. Honestly, there's only four more weekends. I would definitely go back with you if you want to. I would try to go the way that you did it, just like in and out. I feel like I could do. No, I didn't really get to like, you know, go out to dinners. Honestly, there's so many shows. Well, you could have gone to dinner if Brian arrived on time. Yeah. Like if we both like to took 730 flights, like we could have the afternoon and evening. Night. Yeah. Yeah. Katy Perry's residency was uh, going on at the same night. Adele like said she wanted to go. Um there's so many shows like I just I would definitely go back if you wanted me to okay let's we'll talk about it we'll discuss we shall discuss I'm thinking of speaking of things we need to discuss I can't believe we've even gone oh, 17 minutes without discussing what a big day it is here at Spritz Society slash Toast slash Toast slash your media slash Skinny Confidential Enterprises because today's the we've day been we've teasing. been teasing we've been annoying as fuck secret project well here's the secret project reveal if you're watching on YouTube, Jackie's holding it up. We decided many moons ago to do a collab with Lauren Bostick for a multitude of reasons. We already work with Lauren and the Skinny Confidential and Michael at Dear Media. They are investors in Spritz. We've really started to work with them a lot in the last year. And so we've been wanting to do like an influencer collab on Spritz, but we wanted it to be with someone who has like a really engaged community, who has like a really specific brand and aesthetic. And that's so Lauren. I mean, pink, Skinny Confidential. So we have our first ever collab with spritz it is with lauren it is a pink lemonade sparkling wine let me tell you it is the it is far and away the best flavor it really is which is crazy because it's like a limited edition and once they go they're gone it is so fucking tasty and the 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 box is like so lauren like if you look on the side it's like in her font best enjoyed ice fucking cold like that's so Lauren yeah um, yeah you, she writes a little like letter on the box and on the can it's like you can hear her saying it I listened to her podcast this morning so I have her voice in my so head did I. introducing your new favorite sparkly pink cocktail that's right the skinny confidential is serving up this mouth-watering party in a can made with real California white wine real fruit flavors and best enjoyed ice fucking cold It'll look so good on your bar cart. Like Lauren made sure it was aesthetically pleasing on brand for everyone. Um, ben is on her podcast today. I listened to it this morning. It was so funny. And they're just talking about obviously the collab, but also business, entrepreneur. Michael and Ben remind me actually a lot of each other. They remind and each other of each other too. There were a lot of things they had in common on the episode. It was a really good episode. And they talk a lot about like the genesis. So if you're interested in like branding and just like, you know very entrepreneurial hustle vibes mm -hmm. they they dive deep and if you want to get the flavor you can um what's cool about it is that lauren went to her audience and like asked them a bunch of different questions on like what you want the box to look like what flavor you want how you want it to taste so it's really made by the skinny confidential audience 
It's made with real California white wine. It has real fruit flavors. It's all natural. You know Lauren is serious about what she puts in her body. Like yeah. this is TSC approved. Mm -hmm. It has the TSC stamp of approval. Um, like all of the Spritz Society flavors, it has no artificial sweeteners. It's gluten free. It has 120 calories. It has a 6% ABV. You can shop the new limited edition packaging. Read the best served ice fucking cold tagline. Um, when you go to SpritzSociety.com slash TSC, that's Sprit Society, S-P-R-I-T-Z, Society.com slash TSC. TSC, as in the Skinny Confidential. We are so excited for you to try it. We are so excited to be partnering with Michael and Lauren. I feel like every time like we talk about them, all we do is just talk about like how much we love and respect them and like their business. Yeah. And to, to have like something out in the world with them is very, very exciting. And it's also, just more importantly, so fucking good. Like so fucking tasty. If none of the rest it tastes means, like a Starburst. If none of the rest means anything to you, you know, right. the collab, the entrepreneurialship, the the natural flavors, the ABV percentage just know it's fucking tasty it's so good I tried it for the first time a few months ago and it was like it's giving pink starburst you know sour patch it's so good it seriously is but it's not too sweet like what you would think of pink lemonade starburst it could be too sweet it's not but it's, it's perfectly sweet it's refreshing yeah it's really good I'm very excited for that to be out in the world now and everyone to be able to try it um it's just like, you know, business things. Business things this morning. I really enjoyed listening to their podcast this morning. And Me just too. like a podcast. I always say this every time I happen to listen to another podcast before our show. Like I should do it more often because you could really just like learn a lot from other people as people and also as podcasters, you know? Yeah, I loved listening to it. I got it. I got ready uh, listening to it as well. And I enjoyed it very much. I also just loved listening to podcasts where like I am spoken about, you know, they obviously yeah. talked a lot about the toast. My and, like, name marriage. was in there a few times. Like that yeah. was exciting. I was like, there I am. Yeah, it's nice <laughs> to feel like personally vested in a podcast in that way. I don't know if I enjoy listening to podcasts where they don't talk about me. I, I don't know if like I enjoy that as much. Actually, the only podcast we listen to are ones where people talk about us because people send it to us. They're like, they're talking about you at minute 29. So yeah. You listen, or they don't tell you the, the minute they're talking about you. So you listen to the whole thing waiting for them to talk about you. Yeah, that's fun. Like when somebody DM me, oh my God, Tim Dillon talked about you on his Patreon. Oh, okay. So <laughs> let me sign up and pay $8 to hear Tim Dillon call me fat. Okay, bitch. I don't know why that person messaged me. Like, I would want to fucking hear that. And yeah, two, he, I'm like, I'm going to pay to hear somebody I respect and admire call me fucking fat. Bitch, you're fucking fat, okay? Pot calling the kettle black, bitch. He said it in an endearing way. Yeah, he did. Like, he said it, it with a, a lot of respect for you. He wanted to actually partner with you and try and, uh, try and solve some of the world's problems. And he just, like, happened to also... Yeah, let Save me tell you why. Him. Let me tell you why it was hurtful to be called fat. <laughs> Two, one, because I had to pay for it, and it's like, okay, I could, you know, log on to Reddit and see people calling me fat for free. So That's I don't need true. to. I don't need to, you know, put this on on a business expense. One, it's true. Two. What was my second point? Hold on, I had a good one. It was hurtful because I had to pay for it. I think I know the second point, but I don't want to like I don't assume. Wanna, I don't want to assume, but I think it what was hurtful. It? Based on, you know, how I remember it. And oh, there was, no, no, because, no, I remember. Shh, 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 shh. Okay, can I, I guess? No, no, no. Just to see if I, I can... Don't, I don't want you to beat me to the punchline. It's funny. Okay, fine. Let me set the scene for you guys where I'm at in yeah, my life. this is what I was going to say. You know, I'm feeling good. I had lost like 25 pounds. And I'm like on this health kick. I'm I feel on like this more. Journey. I feel like you lost more. Maybe, maybe. Maybe I'm halfway through my journey. Like I've made significant progress in my life. I thought maybe I'm past the point of people rogue calling me fat. Maybe. Uh, no, somebody I think is so funny and like really like their content is out here calling me fat. It's like, okay, you want to call me fat before? Like, all right, it's kind of mean, but it's not entirely inaccurate. But now it's like, I'm not even that fat. I'm like more chubby now. Maybe overweight is what you could call me. And I'm being called fat. Like that, that was her fault. And you know what? I wanted to come on the podcast like the next day and like rip Tim fucking Dylan a new asshole. But you know, he's so funny. He's so funny. I, for me, like one of the most unforgivable sins in the world is calling someone fat. Like it's so mean. Um, and I'm I'm here and I'm kind of unbothered. Like I still like really think he's funny. And it was it was tough because I'm grappling with being such a big fan but of But like, someone. does it help at all that he said it in like in a loving way? Like he wasn't like coming right, for it. It wasn't your that some loving. people have like gotten up and be like that. Yeah, the yeah. word, and it's like yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. He was saying like, "Hey, like he was he was saying it in he the was way using that, like, it as a descriptor." And like, I feel like you 
have a lot of um affection for the word chubby like it's just not yeah. a, a word that bothers you you find it to be like cute and, and that's yeah like maybe that's how he feels about the word fat like I don't think he knew that it would cut you to your core I don't think he knew no it cut even more given that like I was on this journey you yes, know yes. of of weight loss <sighs> here's the thing he hasn't apologized but I forgive him you know <laughs> doesn't it's know. just tough like he doesn't I, know your your feelings he doesn't even know I listened to it because it was behind a paywall he probably thought I would never hear it but like one thing about me when they say oh this person talked about you on their <laughs> podcast I'm gonna listen to the whole thing just to hear the four seconds and in the future if you're gonna dm me oh Blake spoke about you on their podcast send a timestamp, bitch okay I have a lot of shit going on I can't be like listening to hours of podcasts send a timestamp, okay and if they use the F word, maybe... Trigger warning. Not even. Uh, you do want to know if someone calls you fat on their podcast or you just don't want to know about it, period. I'm going to find out anyway. Like, Why? They I don't were, know. Only one person messaged you that. If they didn't message you it, you would have never known. Yeah, because who the fuck would message me something? Like, oh, they spoke about you. They was obviously calling me fat. <laughs> like, why would you tell me that? That person was an enemy. Except that, like we loved him dylan we have like so much respect for him and like he was talking about you and like in a otherwise nice way and wanting to collab with you i know like if you had told me like somebody would go on their podcast which by the way he's like one of the biggest creators on patreon like yes. he's huge it's not he was not shouting into a void it's you know thousands of people so if you had told me somebody called you fat on their podcast and like you still follow them and engage with their content and like them like i would have never believed you but like and also, you know, obviously Tim Dillon is no spring chicken. He's pretty big himself. So to hear, you know, it coming from a fellow member of the fat community, I I don't know. It definitely lessened the blow. I don't know. I'm, it's something I definitely struggle with. Yeah, I I understand. But like, I'm, I never unfollowed him. Like if anybody else called me fat, like, oh my God, death to them. We ride at dawn. <laughs> but there's something about Tim Dillon that's just, he's so funny. Like I just... I can't you'd actually ask him. You'd only be like hurting yourself if you cut him off because then you wouldn't get the funny content. I love his reels. Like I'm always sending them to you. I'm always sending them to you. Yeah, it's like whoever sees it first. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm going to have to move past. And you know, maybe Tim Dillon will hear this and shoot me an apology, which would go a long way, but I don't even need it. That's how like, that's how much of a fan I am. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. It's, you know what, Tim? It's okay. Yeah. But it's not. Like, it's not fucking okay, bitch. Call me fat again. See what fucking happens, bitch. Call me fucking fat again. And I thought me and Tim were good. He actually invited me to a barbecue at his house. I was like, oh my God, I'm getting in Tim's inner circle. And then this, the F word. It's so, so uncool. Life is so unfair. Yeah. Just when you think you're getting somewhere with someone. They go and fucking call you fat. On a podcast, nonetheless. Mm. Safe space. I think... I think yeah you patreon know safer space yeah you know i think he thought i would never hear it you know and that's okay i'm i'm okay that's you know what i'm okay <laughs> she survived i survived she's a survivor i am <sighs> it was tough claudia listen do a flip do, no we're always quoting him here you know fuck you tim <laughs> dylan bitch okay <laughs> fuck you i'm mad <laughs> That was so, I was so mad in the moment. But then, like, time heals all wounds. Yeah, no, but I'm, like, a bitter bitch. Like, I hold grudges. And with Tim, like, I've, I've let it go. Yeah. I can't quit you, Tim. Some people I really hold grudges. Like, I will tell you what they did yeah. five years ago. I will quote it verbatim. Other people could offend me last week, and I forgot already. You know, it's like, he's just this charismatic guy. Mm-hmm. He's got this way about him, this je ne sais quoi. He does have a je ne sais quoi. So I'm moving on and letting go. Yeah, I'm moving on, letting go, holding on to tomorrow. I've always got the memories that it keeps me where I'm going to be. I'm so we glad Hannah Montana wrote that song for me in these trying times. Fifth Harmony also wrote a song about you called Miss Moving On. You know, because I am Miss Moving On. Totally. I'm so Fifth Harmony. You're Sixth Harmony. No, Camilla left, so. Hey, guys. Turdy's here. <laughs> Turdy <laughs> is here. I often think about, like, the utter disaster that was Fifth Harmony's career. There was, like, no reason they they 
were so tacky. Like everything they did was like so low budget, but they were so talented and they had such good songs. That was like the only thing carrying them through. The songs were bops. But like when, when I see footage all the time on TikTok of like, you know, they're come up and they're doing these like shows in malls on these like broke down stages being held together by a piece of duct tape. Like they were on this big show. They had Simon Cowell behind him. There was like no reason everything they did was so beyond low budget. Yeah, I also feel like, and this is based on interviews that I heard from them. Like, I feel like they didn't make any money from it. They did It's like their songs were number one on the radio, number one on the charts. Like you couldn't walk down the street without hearing their music. And they were not making money. Yeah, because they're like the prime example of like getting taken advantage of, like very young girls, like just signing a record deal, not getting a ton of money, and then having to split it five ways. Oh, yeah. So they really, they may, I think, you know, a lot of them have nothing to show financially from their time during in that, in that band. Yeah, plus then once you're at that level, it's also expensive to live at that level. Right, the you're stylist, star, the publicist. Style, hair, security, like, yeah, the money just goes out the window. No, it's so true. That's why they're all doing their own things now. Like different projects. A lot of them are like influencer vibes. Love that. I love an influencer vibe. Yeah. No, it's, it's a really interesting case study and what not to do after X Factor. But what's the alternative? Say they were like, no, this is a bad contract. I'm, then they would just right. be defunct X Factor. True. Expats. So true. X fat. X, X fats. Oh, no, 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 no. Turdy. I was trying to say, I was trying to say factor and expat. You guys know what I meant expat yeah I like that yeah so with if that's everything I think we could dive in to, yeah we've we have stuff to discuss we have stuff to discuss so let's dive into the fast life stories that you need to know imminently and the fast life stories that you need to know imminently is brought to you by Babbel one of the most exciting things about a new year is that you have no idea what adventures are in store for you especially if like me you're saying yes to life from new travel experiences to new jobs or picking up skills, there's no better way to prepare for 2023 than by learning a new language with Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that has sold more than 10 million subscriptions. And thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you can feel confident no matter where the new year takes you. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. So whether just learning a new language is something you want to do this year or you have trips coming up and you want to, you know, get a little bit like the baseline of the language just so you can feel confident and safe walking around. There's really so many good reasons to get started on Babbel because other language learning apps use AI for their lessons pl lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts. They're voiced by real native speakers and not computers. You can choose from over 14 different languages, plus their spe speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. It comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So right now, you can get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash toast. That's B A B B E L dot com slash toast for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Today's episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. So Squarespace is really everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So whether you have a side hustle, you want to start an e-commerce business, really Squarespace is the best place to start because they've got e-commerce they've got you know really integrated ways to connect your social media you'll own all your content they have a uh, squarespace one click data portability so it's really the best place to start if you're looking to get into website building and you don't have a lot of background in like software engineering or computer science or website building i have built many websites over the years for like blogs e-commerce and i can tell you squarespace from experience is really the best they make it so easy they'll give you really good insights into your traffic overview and your analytics so if you want to get a free trial um use squarespace.com slash toast and then when you're ready to launch you can use the offer code toast to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or a domain that's squarespace.com slash toast for the free trial and then offer code toast to save 10 percent 10 percent off your first purchase they also have great product features like email campaigns you can collect donations you can share on social you have great blogging tools so if you're into blogging you can connect your content to facebook twitter google plus linkedin reddit pinterest tumblr all the great places again that's squarespace.com toast for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use the offer code toast to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or a domain that is code toast thank you turdy you're welcome i think a sneeze is upon me Oh, let it out, girl. 
I don't know. It's like so far away. It's a distant sneeze. And now I jinxed it. There's nothing. There's no hell on earth greater than being teased by a sneeze. I was teased. Oh, so sorry. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts during this time. Our You're welcome. First story. The SAG Awards were last night. Neither Turdy nor I watched, but no. two moments stood out to me as worth discussing. Great. Aubrey Plaza went viral after getting caught losing her temper on stage during the White she, Lotus I win. I saw. Okay. So Aubrey Plaza is going viral after the SAG Awards where she got caught losing her temper during two separate moments when her White Lotus co-stars accepted the SAG Award for Best Ensemble in a Drama Series on Sunday night. Uh, the actress was caught looking annoyed and pissed off as she stood alongside Theo James, Megan Fahey, and Will Sharp, and fellow actor John Grise. John um, is seen whispering something into her ear, which made her look furious. So the whole cast went up to accept the award for best cast. And um, he says something to her. People believe that he was trying to warn her that she's about to have a wardrobe malfunction. Because if you saw her yeah. dress, like that seems likely. And she, because she immediately adjusted her gown to cover her cleavage. But then after that, she appeared to awkwardly mouth Jesus Christ under her breath and just look mm -hmm. overall pissed, especially during a winning moment. This is so tough because like Aubrey Plaza is always like committed to some bit. She's always <laughs> being like quirky or like, I don't know, she's always like doing something. She's so fucking hard to read. So this could have been part of like some bit, you know, she's always just like doing the most or she could have been like legitimately peeved. I don't, honestly, I don't know. Cause she's, she's honestly, she's fucking confusing. Like I never know if she's being serious or not. Yeah. I don't know her on that level. Like I'm not a fan enough to like know what she's doing and why she's doing it. I just don't know what, like what sort of bit makes you act like annoyed when you're in the midst of a celebration, joyous win. Um, I don't I don't know I, really I don't know either I really um I find her incredibly confusing like to read she's always like you know doing something and it's like everyone thinks it's funny and I'm like I don't get it like actually, her kind of her comedy is very like dead dry pan, straight yeah. yeah so was this that question mark I don't know I will say, I feel like the SAG Awards when it comes to award season are like the irrelevant ugly. Like who fucking cares? I didn't even know people watched it. But everyone really showed up last night. Everyone looked really glamorous. And I found like there was a lot of chatter on social media about it when I feel like what, everyone decided to get together and watch the SAG Awards, like not tell me. No, I feel like the SAG Awards always come up. It's like, okay, this is the relevant one. But I feel like people in the industry actually really like the awards. There's something yes. like very legit about it. Everyone shows up for it. I'm also getting very sick of like this rotating cast of characters that we've seen all throughout award season. Like it's the same 20 people. It's like Angela Bassett, Jamie Lee Curtis. It's everyone in the song. Yeah, everyone in the song after this like needs to. Oh, and Ariana DeBose was there. I know, that's our second moment. Um... Everyone in the song, like, I know they're on the circuit right now, but the circuit seems like longer than ever. And it's really just like the same people. And like, there are people who were on it last year who are, you know, nowhere to be found. Like, usually this would be like Jennifer Lawrence or Margot Robbie. Yeah. And now it's just like other people. Um, even like, I mean, Jennifer Coolidge looked amazing last night. And I love her and I can never get sick of her. But it's like, uh, where is she going to be next year? Like, no, I, I, I want to see though, next the, year. I don't want to see this, next week. The SAG Awards are nice because and it's similar to the golden globes where it's it's film and tv so i find like a lot of like the exclusively film events bafta oscars those are like a little more boring but mm -hmm. when you know the white lotus cast shows up and people from like succession like that's fun yes i and so i feel like the sags actually get uh an irrelevant reputation but are pretty cool i think people in the industry enjoy going to them and respect them and if you ever take the time to watch the show it's probably better than golden globes or oscars like because there's a little less pressure yeah i've always regarded it as very much like an industry event that like happens to be televised and like who cares but i feel like in recent years you're right it's kind of becoming like a cool event yeah i feel like you've even watched sometimes in the past and you're always just like surprised by how much you enjoy it but I also think that's because the bar is so low yes yes Jennifer Coolidge gave a really funny and cute speech she's she's also like always doing some sort of bit but I felt like last night she was being really authentic she was talking about her parents um I think she got choked up a little bit and then of course she like ended it with a joke because she's Jennifer Coolidge but you're right I think everyone feels really relaxed when they go because it's it's an industry thing yeah so uh White Lotus won yeah still thinking about watching it Brendan Fraser won Yes. Which is good. I do think SAGs really do set the stage for Oscars. Like, I I do think there's a, a lot of crossover in the winners. 
I don't know. I feel like we've gotten to a place where maybe in the past you could have said that, but now it's just like everybody will take home one award from award season. And that yeah, needs we're to all be winners. Enough. You know, like we really we're all winners. Austin Butler is like still doing the thing. Like Yeah. I'm ready for the next chapter, is all I'm saying. No, you're right. It definitely feels lengthy. Lengthy. At lengthy. length. At yeah. length. And then also at the SAG Awards, another fun moment was Ariana DeBose poking fun at her viral BAFTAs rap while presenting at the awards. So she presented alongside Diego Luna and she said, Diego, do the thing. And they panned to Angela Bassett. And then when they came back to Ariana, it looked like she was doing the shoulders. And it was also um, this weekend, the NAACP Image Awards and Angela Bassett won and she came up and she said, I guess I did the thing. So it's like everyone's and you know what? There's no better way to kill a moment than by everyone doing it. Yeah. So you know what? I think Ariana getting in on it, Angela getting in on it. Like, I don't think it's funny anymore. Lisa like, got in on, on it at her yeah, concert. Yeah, I'm ready to move on. Ooh. And you know what? Ar- Ariana's probably happy about that. The like, thing is... An unintended consequence. I'm ready to move on from Angela Bassett did the thing because everybody's doing that part, but there are so many other nuggets from it. Like I know. Blanchett, Kate, you're a genius. Jamie Lee Curtis, you are all of us. You are of all us. of us. I don't get that. Except Jamie yeah, Lee let's Curtis. Yeah, hyper-fixate, let's hyperfixate on some other moments because there's there's more noteworthy moments in there too. Yeah, and a girl, you were great and blonde. And she wasn't. So that was cool I think Ariana she to was lie. really good, but the movie wasn't as good Turn. as they think it was. Yeah. What it, were you going to say about Jamie Lee? She has a children's book that I like that I read to Harry sometimes, Where Do Balloons really? Go? Really? Yeah, it's really good. What's it called? Where Do Balloons Go? It's like, Cute. Conceptually about when you um, let go of your balloon, where does it go? And it's like... And where does it? It just, it, it theorizes about all these different like fun things, the balloons they meet up. Can balloons with no writing read the ones that have writing on them? Where do, where do they end? Um, I think like they go into space, they go on and on. And then by the end, I'm always like, oh, is this a metaphor for loss? Oh, you know what? It does sound like it might be. That's actually a really great concept for a book. Yeah, that's always, I don't know if, because you would think like where do balloons go? It's going to be like some environmental lesson about like not to yeah. let go of your balloon and get stuck in a right. tree and bird chokes. But no, I think it's about loss. Like where do they <laughs> go? Beautiful. They yeah. keep going up and they're having a party, a dance party. Oh, and then eventually all the other balloons. they go into like the space. I kind of love that. It's really, and it rhymes, which are the only kind of books I'm willing to read because the rest are no fun. Let's talk about this trend in children's book. I realized it when I became an auntie. It's like, you know, iambic pentameter and and rhyming is no longer a requirement. And I think that's beyond, beyond disgraceful. Yeah. No, it's... What are we teaching our children? <laughs> no, it's like, it's just so unfun. No, and it's like... I'm going to have to read this book one million times to my fucking kid. Like, let me have a good time. Like, let's get a beat in there. Right. And also, once you've read it one million times, you have it memorized. That way, when they keep futzing with the pages, you don't have, you can just keep going. Yeah. And you're not like seriously stalled. Like, what happens next? Right. So I just think, I don't know who I need to talk to, but we need to get rhyming like back in style. Yeah. If anyone can do it, Turdy, it's us. So true. So true. Anyways, check out that book. I, I really liked it. Um, Jamie Lee won. She gave Michelle Yo like an enormous kiss on the lips. It was like more than it was just really big. Like it was long. Hmm. Yeah, it was cute. I, I, I like their friendship a lot. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie. Oh, but what I was gonna say was Jamie Lee is like you know obviously on this press circuit. So a lot of her interviews have been like making news. She did stand up for Ariana DeBose when she was asked about it. She was like, everyone needs to just like shut the fuck up and back the fuck off and like leave Ariana alone, which I thought was really cool of her. And um, she has said that while there's no official plans, like there will be a Freaky Friday sequel. Like there's nothing in the works. I saw. She said there's nothing in the works, no plans, no contracts, no deals, but like it's happening. To me, that's a no-brainer. Lindsay Lohan is the mom, Jamie Lee's the grandma, there's a new kid on in the block. Yes. And maybe the three of them like each get switched. Done. Yes. Or like Lindsay Lohan and her daughter get switched and Jamie Lee helps them navigate through it. Like Or so like easy. Jamie or Jamie and Lindsay do it again and the kid they have to act cool in front of the kid. Like there's a million ways this could go. Yeah, just like they had to act cool in front of the little brother. Right, right. And Chad, Chad Michael Murray. Of course. he, Him and Lindsay get married. Oh, of course. And Chad Michael Murray is like kind of like, you know, taking a lot of low budget projects these days. So he's, I available. Think he's available. He's available. Uh, this one writes itself. A hundred percent. 
Are you ready for our next story? Yes. Yes, I am. Royal pop culture news, my favorite. Oh, this is fucking interesting. King Charles's coronation is in crisis as Elton John, the Spice Girls, and other top musical acts decline his invitation to perform. So with the coronation of King Charles III just two months away, reports are emerging that the event is having a difficult time lining up entertainment. According to The Express, a star-studded concert is being planned at Windsor Castle to follow the ceremony at Westminster Abbey. However, organizers are having a hard time booking the big British stars. So far, Elton John, the Spice Girls, and Harry Styles have been asked and have all declined. But as the Sun pointed out, it's reportedly nothing personal, simply that their artist schedules are jam-packed. You can cross-reference that. Elton is on tour. He's in, like, Germany the night before. And Harry Styles is always on tour. Always so it's on like, tour. It really is two months away. Like, you could just go to harrystyles.com slash tour and yeah, check it out. They're not lying. Um, other A-list British pop stars to have reportedly turned down the event include Ed Sheeran, Adele, and Robbie Williams. Performers who are expected so far are Kylie and Danny Minogue, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and Lionel Richie. Oh, okay. So it's not great, but it's not terrible. No, but like if I was a big British star. Which you kind of are. Which I kind of am. Though, but I guess I'm not a singer. I'm just like a kind of like a big British personality. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I kind of like, you're giving like Pierce Morgan energy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, a, like a famous British talking head. 100%. I would move heaven and earth to get my ass there. I know. And you would. I know Elton has a show. Well, Elton's older, so it's different. He has a show in Germany the night before. Like, if it were Harry with a show in Germany the night before, like, he could get a plane and fly in for this. Like, it, this yeah, but so Elton also has been involved in so many royal events in the last 20 years that I don't think this one like stands out in particular it's like he's done a million he'll probably do more yes but a coronation is a once in a lifetime thing especially yeah. when you know Queen Elizabeth reigned for so long most of us haven't I mean obviously us but like I don't even know if Elton John was alive for Elizabeth's coronation right no. so it's it's not just like you know it's the the centennial like it's a coronation so it's a historic day uh I understand people are busy I wish they like thought about that when you know they had this date on the books for a while like why are we just now reaching out to people but by the way there's also this intersection of you know British celebrities and British celebrities who are friends with Harry and Meghan and I feel like Adele is probably like friendly with them I don't know why she just like she reminds me of that like you know Ellen Chris Jenner Montecito like rich inner circle yeah but I think that there's also British celebrities who are either like royalists or like anti-monarchist and I think that if Adele was you know a, a fervent royalist um that would also affect her relationship with Harry and Meghan I don't I, I should go and look for any interviews where she's maybe like talked about how she feels about the Them. queen or whatever yeah. um not no just like the queen because I feel like that's you know British talking point but everyone I think even if you weren't uh, a monarchist everyone loved and respected the queen and would but she didn't perform at Jubilee Adele yeah, but Jubilee is not as historic as like a coronation, like you were saying. Yeah, but it was like very clear that this was going to be like the last big Queenie yeah. event. But they pulled it out for the Jubilee and none of these people performed for Jubilee either except for Elton John. And yeah. still like they had British artists, large, mid-sized, small. I loved seeing some of the smaller artists. What about artists. Ellie Goulding? I know, I was thinking about Ellie Goulding, but she performed in Harry and Meghan's wedding. Never mind. Um... <laughs> No, I'm telling you, it's tough to find. Honestly, people are like shocked that they that they can't find someone. But when you really think about the group, it's like, okay, we have singers, British singers, British singers who like the monarchy and don't have like personal politics. You know, I'm not British, but I imagine like you either fall into some category, like a monarchist or not monarchist. Right. So then you then you have to be a monarchist. Then you have to be a monarchist who's not siding with Harry and Meghan. Then you have to be a monarchist who's not siding with Harry and Meghan, who's not currently on tour and is technically available on May the right. 6th. So I think people are like, oh, everyone hates Charles. Like, he, they're not performing. And maybe there's an element of that. But I also think it's not so easy. Yeah, but it also, like, should be a little easier considering, I like, he's the king. I, I, think, defi I definitely think there's an element of just also people not liking or respecting Charles. Yeah, especially because of them being, like, Diana stands as well. Right. So, like, if this was William's coronation... I don't think there would be such I a think Little time. Mix would be having a reunion performance. And you William. Know, Prince Prince William has hung out with and, you know, actually sang a song with Taylor Swift and and John Bon Jovi. Like I think he's got deep ties in Hollywood. Yeah. I feel like King Charles has he's been literally a famous 
world figure his whole life. I feel like people he has don't like him. Hollywood friends. No, but he's so like Hollywood. Weirdly. Not as much as like, like Harry and Meghan he, at this point, but like yeah. he's been at the A list since he was born and now he's seventy what? Like, you know? I just feel like people don't like him. I hope that they bring Adam Lambert and the remaining members of Queen. That was really good. Always a smash it. I hope they bring Neil Diamond to sing Sweet Caroline so that we could see George singing along again. Yeah, do you think they have to be British? Yeah. Like no. Taylor Swift? No, I don't think I they... I mean, she loves... You know she loves a London boy and she like has a house in London. Obviously her boyfriend's British. Like, I don't know. I think there's a tie and I think Taylor Swift could do it. Lionel Richie, is he British? No, you're right. So I think that they don't have to be British, but they do need some of the big British acts because like this is a big moment for Britain. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Little Mix, get Love. together. Yeah, Ed Sheeran was surprisingly like absent from the Jubilee, but isn't Ed Sheeran Scottish? Is he? Let me just double check because if you're from Scotland, like you don't really fuck with the royal family. Yeah, 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 there's a lot of history there. No, I'm sorry. He's English. I take that back. He was born in West Yorkshire and raised in Framlingham. Framlingham. So, what about Ollie um, Murs? What about that guy who sang that I song? I did, Jackie. I did read that Ollie Murs is performing. Like, they're like, they can't get anyone good, so they got Ollie Murs. That's what I read on Twitter. That's all you need. Yeah. You need Ollie Murs. You need Mimi Webb. You got to strive for a little mixed reunion. The guy who sang that song that was like the wrong song to sing and they even left out the... the, the green, green grass. Yeah. Blue, blue sky. Yeah, George Ezra performed that song and the lyrics go, you better throw a party on the day that I die. Which was like a weird select, but he did sing it like this. Green, green grass. Blue, blue sky. You better throw a party. That's how he sang it. Pick a different song. I know, but that, I, and actually, that's not even his most famous song. Like, he's really known for my house in Budapest, my, my hidden treasure chest. I'm in grand I know. Yeah, everyone knows that. Singing, ooh, 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 I'm talking about you. Like, that's like his biggest song. So I did, that was a weird select for sure. For sure. Because ju the Jubilee was literally throwing a party on the day that she died. Like, no, she literally died. She a week wasn't later. even at the concert because it she was, weird. was like too. Tired. old and frail it was a really really bizarre song choice especially given the fact that it's not his biggest song it's like if you got one big hit okay you got to sing the hit but literally budapest is 40 times bigger yeah i do see um i went to the express article and i see that ollie murs um is filling in some of the gaps i'm obsessed i love ollie murs this is a concert meant for me it's just like mid-tier british artist which is actually my favorite genre of music it's so, it's so true can't wait. They need a big headliner. They got to figure it out. Yeah, they do. Taylor they will be big. on tour. Oh, she'll be in Nashville. Yeah. May 6th. Snitch's yeah. birthday weekend. Yeah. She'll be in Nashville. Can't yeah. do it. See? Yeah. yeah. And these schedules are lined up years before. Charles didn't become king until a few months ago. Right, right. So even if they got to work immediately. There's genuine conflict. Yeah. They, they have to figure something out in terms of like a big name. They need one big name. It's a I coronation. Wonder, like, I wonder if anyone in the royal family like sings as a hobby. There's got to be that's one such good a voice. Good question. There's got to be one good voice. The odds there's what like twenty working members. There's got to be one. Who do you think, Camilla Parker Bowles? I get that's so <laughs> something Charles would do. Like, you know, my wife has like an amazing voice, and she sings like the British <laughs> national anthem or whatever. That is something Charles would do. But like, what about like Prince Edward's wife, Sophie? I think she might have an amazing voice. There's definitely somebody who's like got a good party trick, you know, hey, I could sing. Yeah. What about Susan Boyle? Bring her out, bring her out. National treasure, love that. Love it. Love. I think well, we've given you see. some great ideas. Um, Carnation planning committee, take with them what you will. Yeah. This isn't a good look for Charles. Like it's like kind of embarrassing this article coming out. Like he's, so they need to show up with like a good, they they have to just, they have to pay. They have to figure something the fuck out. Yeah. They gotta get Beyonce or something. Like, come on. Even though Beyonce loves Megan. True. True. According to Megan. But there's so many big stars in the world. Like even though it yeah. feels like a small community, like there's just so many. And a lot of them are British. Yeah. Or, you know, they could, 
they could figure out a song to sing. They could do a cover. Yeah. They could do yeah. a flip. Do a flip. <laughs> yeah. So good luck. I look forward to watching this concert. I really do. Uh, are you ready for our next story? Circling yeah. back to someone who's come up a number of times in this conversation now, Adele is rumored to be engaged to Rich Paul. You know what? You saw. She was wearing at the show, but she was also wearing like a lot of diamonds and a lot of rings, but she was wearing like a big ass She was ring. wearing an engagement ring on her engagement ring finger. And sometimes like we look into like, oh my God, are they secretly married? And it's like, right. here she is sitting down with her ring on her finger. Although I will say on Saturday night, she did reference, uh, she was talking about sports and she's like, I love basketball because my boyfriend loves basketball. So she said boyfriend. Okay, well, two things are a theory. One, she hasn't gotten used to saying the word fiance. When you go from boyfriend to fiance, fiance seems like such a pretentious word. It took me a while I to agree. get comfortable. Two, she didn't want to like spoil her news. She just wanted to like dangle it. I do find it surprising though that she would want to get married again. Yes. Well, who, just because if you listen to her music, like I think she feels so sad that she got divorced, and like um, like uneasy on me, like she like she almost sounds like disappointed in herself. Mm -hmm. So I just find it surprising because divorce is not something that she took lightly. Like I think she did everything in her power not to get divorced. This is like still rumored. Um, this is Daily Mail and they're citing Dumois as the confirmation oh. for her being engaged. But she did wear an engagement ring and she does have a very serious boyfriend. And yeah. even though I feel like when she first got divorced, you would be like, oh, she's scarred. She's not going to do this again. Like I feel like her and Rich Paul are so serious. Yeah. He is as successful, if not more successful yeah. than her. So like they'll be able to like legally you know be and just be married to be like romantically married and I feel like she's a believer in marriage and that's why it hurt so much that it didn't work out it kind of reminds me right now of Kelsey Ballerini where it's like I don't think she is off on marriage period I could see her in a few years being like no I, I wanted that like I tried for it it was just not the right person and I could totally see Adele random. now being like this is the right person and I do like the institution let's do it totally random but I just remembered something that Adele shared at the show that I want to share um because my favorite Adele song is Turning Tables and she was like this is just like weirdly a fan favorite song like it's really not even like her biggest song but I was so glad it was on the um on the set list and she said my I, I think that was, that was on 21 or 25 21 she was like I used to have such good uh, song titles. Like I feel like as I've gotten older, like I'm getting worse at coming up with song titles. And the reason I called it Turning Tables is because we had this big fight, the person I was in a relationship with at the time, we had this big fight at a Chinese restaurant and there was like a Lazy Susan um, and we were fighting and he wouldn't pass me the food. And I was like screaming to pass the food, turn the table. And honestly, I thought she was kidding at first. And she was like, no, that's literally why it's called Turning Tables. Because of the Lazy Susan at a Chinese restaurant. Queen. That's really funny. I know. And just like a fun fact about one of my favorite songs. Yeah. Now thinking of her new song titles. I They're drink not great. wine. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Love is a game. They're kind of like corny. But Easy on Me is good. Yeah. She opens the show with, a, with Hello. Mm -hmm. And she just like saunters out. It's not like this big, dumb, like, you know, shadows, silhouettes. Like she just saunters out in this gown. There's a man playing the piano. And it's so amazing because you know I don't know if you've seen the show but the whole stadium not stadium sorry the whole theater is like covered in screens so you could see her no matter where you look and the, there are these big screens so she sings hello and it's like very slow and then when she opens the chorus hello from finally the screens go on and her face pops up everywhere and it was like honestly it was chilling it was beautiful and then she says by the way uh, I just want to let you know like I do an acoustic set like the first couple of songs and then like there are singers in a band like it's not just me sitting here with the piano the whole time I didn't postpone 14 months just to sit here with the acoustic piano so it was actually very funny she was being very self-aware she wasn't like glazing over the fact that like people had been heavily inconvenienced yeah I feel like I'm like seeing the show I feel like now if I saw the show I'd be like I already heard that you know I feel like you're giving yeah me sorry sorry I'll stop no, no no but likely like if I had to you know place a bet and gamble I would say the odds are you're not going. gonna make it like I would love to but like I don't know that I will so I guess it's better to know what happens. Yeah. Anyways, if they are engaged, congrats. And I believe that they could be. Me too. It's not It's not crazy. They've been together for a decent amount of time too. Yeah, but also sometimes like when you don't want to get married again, but like you have your life partner, you get them a ring. Yeah, and you just like are engaged in this like partnership for years. Yeah, there's no like, there's not going to be a wedding or anything, but like we are partners and I, I wear a yeah. ring. Yeah. So could be that. 
Ready for our next story? Is it the next story that's brought to you by Starbucks, perchance? Yes, it is. Life moves fast. Starbucks Ready to Drink Coffee delivers an uplifting boost that helps you tune into the moments that matter wherever you are. So it is Starbucks coffee conveniently packaged for life on the go. It includes a variety of beverages from the bottled Frappuccino, coffee drink for a pop of flavor to the bold, smooth taste of the nitro cold brew. Bottled Frappuccino chilled coffee drink is inspired by Starbucks fa cafe favorites, and it comes in four delicious flavors, mocha, vanilla, caramel, and coffee. You can enjoy every moment with Starbucks Ready to Drink Coffee. Um, I I have Starbucks ready to drink beverages in my house in the studio because you guys know when I went on my coffee journey I really ended up only really liking the Starbucks ready to drink drinks that they sell so um I love the range whether you want to grab a Starbucks Frappuccino chilled coffee drink or the nitro cold brew which is what I keep in the studio there are so many good choices for whatever mood that you're in um, it's the Starbucks coffee with a pop of flavor that makes our day so much better wherever we are. So you could shop the full lineup online or in store wherever you buy your groceries. They really have it everywhere. I have such an easy time finding it. I first tried it, Jackie Major, shout out. You introduced me to the line of Starbucks ready to drink. I was just like, you know, I'm not a coffee girl. And now I had one this morning. I really cannot do the toast without one of these beverages. Add it to the list of things I convinced you on. So true. Starbucks coffee ready for right now. Shop the full lineup online or in store wherever you buy groceries. That's Starbucks coffee. It is so good. And thank you, Starbucks, for sponsoring this next story. Thank you. This next story is very sad. Mm. Hayden Penetier's family confirms that her 28-year-old brother, Jansen's cause of death was an enlarged heart. So last week it was revealed that uh, Hayden Penetier's younger brother, passed away and a statement from the actor's family confirmed that he died from an enlarged heart quote though it offers little solace the medical examiner reported Jansen's sudden passing was due to cardiomegaly enlarged heart coupled with aortic valve complications um the statement concluded that they sincerely appreciate the outpouring of love and support towards their family as they navigate this unthinkable loss and ask that they be gifted their privacy during this time of mourning also Hayden's Brother Jansen was an actor himself. He was in Even Stevens, uh, The Walking Dead, and a bunch of other stuff. He was, in 2022, he was in a holiday film. So I, is, it's so sad. And I really, I often think about like, and feel sad for Hayden Panettiere. I feel like she's been through so much in her personal life since her rise to fame. Like, obviously, there's a like really bizarre situation with her boyfriend and like the domestic violence, and then her situation where her daughter lives with her father. Um, she had really bad postpartum depression. She like sought treatment. I just feel like it's like one thing after another with Hayden Panettiere. I feel so sad for her. I feel so sad for her too. Just like so much tragedy, and mm -hmm. this story is so upsetting. Um, yeah. I just, she hasn't spoken out about this, so and maybe she's taking time. I mean, she can take as much time as she needs, but I she just imagine she's like- She also doesn't like speak like, out a lot. She's like weirdly private too, but she just has so much that goes on that like gets in the news. Cause it's like, it's one thing after another. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I this is so bad for her. Such a sad loss. And they really, yeah. there's a picture of them. They look so much alike actually. Yeah, they do. It's really cute. It's really sad. I, I hope she's okay. Cause I know she's struggled a lot. And now something like this is just like so devastating. Yeah, beyond. Uh, he was like found in his New York apartment over President's Day weekend. A friend went to check on him because he didn't show up to a business meeting. And upon arrival, they found him sitting upright in a chair unresponsive. First responders oh were God. called and they eventually pronounced him dead. It, Based on what I read, it didn't seem like there was any... Foul play. Foul play or anything like surrounding that the situation. That's like so weird. Just like a, a heart condition for a 28 year old. Or, oh and God. no previous like mention uh, maybe there was this but they didn't mention it in the article um no previous mention issues. of other issues yeah i really i hope she's okay like i hope she's you know taking time to process because that's really sad it's so hard and the parents too to lose yeah. a child terrible yeah our fifth and final story um tommy fury stuns jake paul with a split decision win in saudi arabia jake paul okay let me tell you why this is interesting oh. so i, I actually know no, give anything. the details give the details okay. first except i know now i know jake paul was fighting yeah wait so jake paul who won tommy 
Okay, Jake Paul's first fight against a true boxer didn't go as planned. Tommy Fury handed the YouTuber turned boxer the first loss of his career on Sunday night in Saudi Arabia. Fury, Tommy Fury, beat Jake Paul via a split decision in the eight-round bout despite being knocked down in the final round. The judges scored at 76-73 twice for Fury and 75-74 once for Paul. Paul said after the fight that he didn't agree with the judge's decision and that he both got sick and that he both got sick twice in camp and injured his arm, statements that drew blues from the crowd. But I lost, he said, I'm not making excuses, I'm just saying it was my best performance, I fell flat. Okay, what was this supposed to be and then what was it? What do you mean? Like who was predicted to win? Like is this a shock? I mean, why is this a big no, news? No, it was, well let me tell like you a, why a it's a true boxer beats Jake Paul? So Tommy Fury, you're gonna love this and I feel like you're now gonna become obsessed with his wife, like I know you are. Okay. Him and his wife met on Love Island. They, oh my god okay i'm starting to see something else that i saw molly molly may and they just had a baby literally I, two i've seen ago. i feel like bambi's nursery it's gorgeous i i don't even know molly or tommy i know bambi's nursery that's what the yeah. first thing i saw and then i saw a video last night of molly in her bedroom with the baby she couldn't yes. even bring herself to watch the fight i didn't know what yep. fight i just assumed her husband's a boxer and he fights and the, her friend like runs in and is like he won and she's so happy but i didn't know that Jake Paul was involved or that right. was like the biggest fight in the world today. Yeah, and I, I feel like you would actually really like Molly Mae's content, like yes, mommy yes. stuff. I've gotten served it a few times from my algorithm that it's like a few more times and I will follow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So everyone was like invested, of course, because like these Jake Paul fights like always garner a huge crowd, but like all these girls who love Love Island were like so invested in this fight last night. And these two have been like rumored to have been fighting for so long, like it was very anticipated. And this is the first time that A, Jake Paul lost, but it's also the first time he went up against someone who is like an actual trained boxer. So in the past, he's like done former athletes. Remember he did that former Nick, I think his name is Nate. But didn't he fight Floyd Mayweather? That's Logan. Oh. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh, well, he's not a real boxer. And that's what's cool. I feel like we're always talking about how like influencers are always, you know, kind of infiltrating other spaces. And we always say like the cream rises. So you can't be mad that like, you know, your favorite influencer is doing red carpet interviews and this journalism major never got the opportunity. But you know what? If you stink, you stink. And say what you want about Jake Paul. Like he's really gotten this huge audience for boxing that I don't feel like they previously really cared. And this is like a great testament to that. So even though he lost, like I feel like it's still like a kind of a win for him. It was such a big deal. Everyone was talking about it. Also the numbers of the loss that I'm seeing, it was lost by two points. I don't know boxing scores, but that doesn't, it seems like he put up a good fight. Even one- Yeah, he didn't get knocked out. One judge at one point rules in his favor. Like it seems respectable. Yeah, he didn't get knocked out. It was a respectful loss. He he made an impact. Um, Logan Paul was asked like if he thought it was fair, and Logan was like, "Yeah, it was fair." And I actually like really respected that answer because it's so easy to be like, "No, my brother was wrong. Like he deserved to win." So I, I didn't watch it because I was on the plane, and like I just saw like everyone tweeting about it, and I was like kind of getting invested, especially when I realized that this is the Love Island couple, and that's why like everyone I follow was like talking about this. Okay, but like so this guy Tommy Fury like was a really big famous boxer and went on Love Island. I don't think so. I'm not entirely sure how he like plays in. He is a boxer. I don't know if he became a boxer afterwards. Um, I'm not sure. It, like, or did he become like a big famous one after Love Island? Did his fame from know. Love Island help him with boxing? I don't know. Sound off in the comments. Like the chicken and egg was like, yeah. Why would a big boxer go on Love Island unless he wasn't like that big yet? Especially like Molly and Tommy are like so big in the UK. Mm -hmm. I think they're kind of like the Trista and you know, whoever whatever that guy Tristan was saying Ryan. was. Tristan yeah. Ryan. Because like they, they're married, they have a kid and like people just really like loved following them ever since they left the show and they're really a testament to like the show can work. It's really like giving like Bachelor the first first lady and, and whatever. Molly, Tommy and Bambi should perform at the combination. Coronation. Uh, combination. Yeah, they should. They're so British. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go stalk them now. So there's like a lot of elements is like why anyone would care about this because like it's weirdly very like seethed in pop culture. Yeah, but like do you think, is Tommy, you clearly don't know a lot about his like No, boxing fighting, career, I Because it's like, was he, is he fighting Jake Paul just because they're both like influencer influencers. boxers? I don't but know. But then I saw like Dave Portnoy posted a video that he was so wrong and that Joe Rogan, like he had talked about it on Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan said like, Tommy's gonna win. So if like Joe Rogan, know, and he's really big into fighting, if he knows Tommy yeah. Fury, like he must not just be like an influencer fighter. No, he definitely like is a well-respected and trained boxer. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like on Wikipedia, it says he's a boxer. Oh, he took time off from his boxing career in 2019 to star on Love Island. Maybe so he was a boxer Love Island before. in the UK, like gets real celebrities because it's that big there because it's huge and it's even big here. Everybody watches Love Island UK. He Except made his us. debut um, on, in boxing in 2018. And in 2019, he starred in Love Island. So he had had a, a career prior. But it's and like he when, he went on US- Love I- when he went on Love Island, was the whole country like, oh my God, Tommy Fury's on Love Island. Or they were like, oh, this guy Tommy, he's a boxer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if he was like that famous before, but maybe decently. Yeah. Very cool. Very like you can be a cool. professional boxer and like not famous and like of you don't course. get televised. No, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like you can identify as a boxer. Yeah. No, it's it's a really interesting kind of way to get famous. I love this for yeah. everyone. Like I feel like it's it's been like a global event that I had no idea about. Um, I know. But the same. rest been, like, of the catching globe, up. The rest of the globe was so exciting. And I love that for the globe. Yeah, and like it was star studded. Everyone was out there, and it's really you know bringing Americans and British together. And it was in the Middle East, like right now. It's a global, global affair. Global affair. It's gone global. <laughs> it has. Um, and those are the fast five stories that I feel like you really needed to know. Like actually, yeah, I think so too. Our pink lemonade collab with Lauren Bostic, spritzsociety dot com slash tsc. Check it out. I hope you guys enjoy it and love it. Make sure to tag us when you get it and take pics of it. It's so good. Um, that's our show. Love you dearly. Thank you so much for listening to... Were you going to say something? I was going to say love you dearly, Turdy, if I could. You can. Love you dearly, Turdy. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast the Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the past five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast. Any podcast can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, Castbox, all the places where you listen to podcasts. Find us at Toast the Five Star Review. I'm better, beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an incredible day. We'll see you tomorrow for Tuesday. See you then. Bye. Love you. Bye.